Welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm your host, Jessa Jeremiah, and we have a great show for you today, as always. We're going to check in with our news partner a little bit later, and we're going to talk about building responsibility and independence in children. That's the Madison Community Montessori School. We'll talk to them later. We're also going to introduce you to a scratch bakery and coffee bar that you don't want to miss. But first, we are going to check in with Tim O'Brien, who joins us from Apple Wellness. Welcome, Tim. How are you? Thanks for having me. I'm doing well. Good. Glad to have you. So just to give folks just a quick, brief overview, Apple Wellness is a vitamin and supplement and health food store, correct? You got it. Yeah. Absolutely. So you like to say that nutrition is the answer. We're going to find out why. So. For folks at home, sometimes supplements can be overwhelming, as you know, there's so many choices. What do you think is the, highlight some of the most important supplements for us? Yeah, for sure. So after years of looking around and, you know, Dr. Oz says this and so-and-so says that and my mom says this, you can get a whole cabinet full of goodies. And so when you look at uh, supplements as a whole, it's important to know that there's a supplement pyramid, just like there is a food pyramid. And we know there's some issues with the food pyramid, but with the supplement pyramid, the foundation is pretty simple and not messed up. Antioxidants, anti-inflammatories, omega-3s, multivitamins, and probiotics. So those five, that's your very foundation. And when you start uh, getting away from those, then you're missing something. So okay. if you get the foundations, you're going to get your nutritional deficiencies fulfilled. Okay, so start with those five and then we can adjust from there in terms of our own personal needs. Exactly. And what is your experience with people who, you know, based on their age and their gender and different things they're experiencing, what kinds of differences do you see? Do people really feel better? Absolutely, yeah. So when you get, it's amazing when you get those foundations figured out, how many different things come into alignment. So whatever your trials, struggles, pains are, mm -hmm. you get on the foundations, I mean, energy arises. You'll feel a difference there. Cognitive, yeah. mental clarity, stress levels, immune system, better sleep, pain in the body, uh, joint pain, muscle pain, things yeah. like that. Absolutely. And what would you say is, uh, you know, you named sort of the basic five. Do you have a single most popular supplement? Uh, we do. We do. We have uh, actually in the anti-inflammatory category uh, a product called Curamin. It's a pain product and natural anti-inflammatory that 9 out of 10 people feel a difference with in 45 minutes. And wow. Baylor University's compared it to uh, BCM95 curcumin to uh, uh, morphine and cortisone shots, so wow. pretty, pretty uh, beneficial. So people love it. Yeah. Well, if now you're listening, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna test your IQ a little bit here. Your supplement IQ. I know you have a lot of knowledge. So I've come up with a few different ailments. Tell me if there's a natural remedy. So lots of folks suffer from arthritis. Yes. Is there something that we can take for that? Yeah, great question. So the root of uh, arthritis is actually inflammation. So that's an example of how it comes back again to those foundations. So the product we were just chatting about, mm -hmm. Curamin, is the most powerful product I've seen for treating arthritis because yes. it goes after the inflammation. So you reduce inflammation, you reduce pain connected to arthritis. Interesting how much comes back to inflammation. Yeah. So yeah, it's a amazing. lot there with that. Yeah. Um, coming up soon, of course, as things are starting to defrost, we're getting allergies. Yeah. Is there something we can do about that? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so again, I always like to add that your diet, a clean diet, is the foundation of foundations, right? Mm -hmm. um, but treating allergies, a uh, few different nutrients, quercetin, curcumin, bromelain is an enzyme, and uh, curcumin again. Uh, okay. Inflammation related to allergies. So those are just a few nutrients that are highly effective for allergies. Fantastic. Okay, so that's a good one. And then here's one that lots of folks suffer with is trouble sleeping or yeah. anxiety, just being stressed. Right, yeah, as a whole. Yeah, for sleep, there's three areas of sleep problems. Falling asleep, staying asleep, and deeper sleep. So nutrients like GABA, gamma aminobutric acid, will actually help you get into that deeper REM sleep. Nutrients like tryptophan, uh, melatonin, valerian help you fall asleep. And okay. stress as a whole, uh, when your serotonin levels get out of whack, you can get real stressed, anxiety, uh, stress-related eating, and nutrients like L-theanine are very effective for just, it's an amino acid, very clean, natural, no side effects that calm your body, calm your nerves, and help with anxiety, stress. Wow. 
See, this guy knows his <laughs> stuff, doesn't he? Well, so impressive, Tim. I love talking to you because Thank it's you. you. You really do. It's all up here. <laughs> this was not rehearsed. Uh, so make sure you go check him out at Apple Wellness. And truly, you can come in, ask Tim any of your ailment questions, and he'll point you in the right direction. Thank you so Absolutely. much for joining us. We appreciate it. Now, when we come back, we're going to talk to a scratch bakery that has outstanding coffee. You're not going to want to miss it right here on Talk of the Town. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. Well, as promised, we're going to talk about some scratch bakery items, gourmet coffee, and sandwiches. And if that catches your attention, you're going to want to check out Rosie's Coffee Bar and Bakery. And joining us now is owner Kaz. Is it Scafe? Yes. Well, welcome. So glad to have you. Thank you for having me. So I'm um, very excited to talk to you a little bit. What I'm curious is, you're the owner. Your name is Kaz. Yes. Where did you get the name Rosie's? Well, I named it after my mom. And we have a mission statement to leave the world a little sweeter than we found it. So we've tried to be, you know, we're a bakery, so we try to be sweet. We try to be sweet to the customers and sweet to the employees. Um, why we named it after my mom, um, unfortunately because my parents passed away, that's how I had the money to do this. And when um, they moved up to Wisconsin from Chicago when she was passing away with cancer. And so we went through a Grace Hospice and she was very, um, she was like very touched how much people were like helping her out and doing things for her. And she felt like she didn't do enough in her life. So we feel like it's like paying it forward in her name and hope to do some nice things. Oh, wow. What a sweet story. Thank you. Very special. So that name means a lot to you and, yeah. and the concept as well. Yes. And I'm curious because you actually do a lot of the baking yourself. So mm -hmm. where did you learn to bake? I'm actually a self-taught baker. Really? And yep, wa reading a lot of cookbooks, watching YouTube videos. And then I had, I was a, had done cake decorating and I had done a wedding cake for an accountant who worked for Ovens of Brittany. And so the Ovens of Brittany people were at the wedding. And the mother-in-law of the owner of Ovens of Brittany offered me a job. And I said, well, I'm a cake decorator. I'm not a baker. And she's like, you have the hard part down. And so I always feel like I'm grandma trained, although it was her name was Pat Hafner. And she was the mother-in-law of the owner of Ovens of Brittany. How great is that? Yeah. So kind of a combination of things, but it, how neat to actually learn learn and, and come up on your own because you mm -hmm. probably came up with some unique ideas that way, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. So yep. very good. What do you think has been, over the course of owning this business, the most pleasant surprise when opening that maybe you didn't expect? I think what is really cool is that I got to pick and choose who I get to hang out with every day as far as my employees. And it is a happy place to come to every day. I love everyone that works there and also the customers. I feel like I've made so many good friends. We have regulars and it's just, I just, for me, that's been one of the nicest things to pick and choose who I get to hang out with every day. What a unique perspective. That's cool. That's very true. You get to choose the folks mm -hmm. that are you're surrounded with. Yes. Beautiful. Um, we spoke a little bit over the phone, and you talked to me slightly about the coffee. So yes. share with viewers at home some of the things about your coffee. Well, it's JBC Coffee, and they are roast right here in Madison off of Femrite. They have more coffees rated 90 or above than any other coffee in the world, according to Coffee Review Magazine, which is like an online magazine kind of equal to Wine Spectator. And we all of our coffees have a minimum score of 91 or above. We do our regular batch brew. We do um, pour overs, siphon brews, we have Kalita waves, um, we have a balanced siphon on order, we're excited to get that in. Wow. And um, just all different ways to do coffee. We have a T3 Simonelli, and it was all um, or, like designed and told me what equipment to purchase. Um, Michael Johnson of JBC Coffees did all that for us. Wow. Yeah. So there's a lot of sort of technology and different things going on, and decoded it means really good coffee. You bet. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> really good coffee. So what do you think, and outside of some of these things, is there anything else that really sort of sets you apart or makes you unique? Well, we do our bakery all from scratch. We do um, we use King Arthur flour for all of our things that we're making, which is one of the only flours that can be exported out of the United States because it doesn't contain all that extra stuff. We use Sassy Cow for our dairy and our cream. We get our butter out of a um, European, it's a European style butter out of a farm in Green, Green Lake, Wisconsin. And so we try to buy our local bakery products as much as we can. And I think um, it's very rare to do a lot of bakery from scratch. 
Yes. And so no, no cake mixes can be found in our place and no pre-made frostings or fillings. Wow. We make it all. And you do sandwiches and, and mm -hmm. yep. breakfast and lunch items yep. too. Yep, we bake our bread for our sandwiches in the morning and we make our biscuits every morning, um, go in at 4 a.m. and get all that stuff going. Wow, outstanding. And how long have you been in the food industry altogether? Um, about 33 years. 33 yeah. years of experience. Yes. Well, congratulations to you. You have a fantastic place, and it's exciting to have you here and learn more. And um, make sure you go check out Cause at Rosie's Bakery, and you are on Monona Drive yep. in Madison. Just yes. a stone's throw from Monona. You're right on the edge there. Yes, so. exactly. Fabulous. Well, thank you so much for joining us from Rosie's Coffee Bar and Bakery. Thanks for watching. We've got more coming up next. Parents and athletes, make sure you stay tuned. We're talking about concussions next on Talk of the Town. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. Justin Riley here. It's the time of year when college football bowl games and the Super Bowl are at the top of the mind of all Americans. And here to talk about some of the injuries that are related to playing a game that we all love as Americans so much are John Roman and Dr. Marla Shapiro from the Concussion Institute at Gwinnett, Gwinnett Medical Center in Georgia. You guys, welcome to the program. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Justin. Great to be here. Yeah, great to have you. So, John, I want to start out by asking, uh, how have concussions during the game affected you and how prevalent was uh, and is the problem? Well, you know, Justin, I was very, very uh, fortunate to uh, have survived a couple of concussions during my career in arguably a much more violent period of, of NFL play during the 70s and early 80s. But where concussions have just really resonated with me has really been former teammates and players that I've known through the years that truly are suffering from the effects uh, today of uh, concussions. And, you know, I've done my research, as um, you would imagine, and I see that there's 55,000 concussions that were diagnosed that were in the game of football in 2005, and I see that number uh, getting bigger threefold in 2012 to 167,000. And it's, uh, Houston, do we have a problem here, or is there anything we can do about it? Uh, and that's really what's driven uh, me and why I'm here today because uh, I want to be part of trying to make this game safer. Absolutely. And uh, Dr. Shapiro, can you tell us exactly what is a concussion and what are some of the long-term effects of, of getting a concussion? I'd be happy to, Justin, because education, I think, and making folks aware and knowledgeable is another way to improve safety all around. And a concussion, very simply, is caused by a jolt or a blow, usually directly to the head, that's hard enough to disrupt the brain's metabolic functioning. And it's that, that neurochemical disruption that creates an energy crisis, contributing to the physical, cognitive, emotional, or sleep-related symptoms that we use to diagnose. Sometimes very mild symptoms from headache, light noise sensitivity, to nausea, dizziness, that sort of thing. And while we believe that most athletes can safely recover and return to the sports they love, we know there can be catastrophic and permanent permanent injuries if athletes return too soon or continue to play with symptoms not allowing the brain to heal and in some cases particularly in adolescents can lead to fatal brain injuries. Yes and uh, you know for years now they've um, athletes have been required to wear protective equipment but John I'm wondering if you can, can describe some of the revolutionary technology uh, what what makes this different than all of the other protective devices that are available to athletes? Well, that's a great question, Justin. Um, if you just think about the way helmets are, are manufactured today, the uh, challenge, I think, is not so much the inner shell technology, which has evolved dramatically. Uh, and certainly players are a lot safer in today's helmets than they were, say, 10, 20 years ago. But I think the real challenge is the hard surface, e exterior surface of the helmets. Those hard surfaces are not managing the import, impact of force that occurs when two helmets collide. And so our Pro Cap is a half inch thick protective cover that's designed, Justin, to form fit the helmet and absorb that impact, slow down that transfer of energy that's occurring or that otherwise would occur with just a helmet to helmet hit without the Pro Cap. And it has a slipperier surface to help uh, shed the force and further the way that it's attached on the helmet, it helps guide 
away from the helmet that impact. And we think this revolutionary technology will not only be intuitive, but will make the game safer. Absolutely. And uh, John, we just have a couple seconds left, but I'm wondering what's the next step in uh, getting younger players as well as high school and college athletes to uh, being used to this new technology and um, also uh, that it's designed for uh, professional teams? Mm -hmm. Well, sure. I mean, the first step would be simply to go to defendyourhead.com. That's our website. Uh, a lot of great information there for uh, your listening viewers. Uh, and very quickly, I do believe that uh, you will see the pro cap being used in the NFL, uh, and it will be a, a, a choice by players who are certainly concerned about the longevity of their careers. Absolutely. John Roman and Dr. Marla Shapiro, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you, Justin, and have a great day. Yes, you too. Stay right here. We'll be right back with more Talk of the Town. Hi, welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Justin Riley. Later on in the program, we're going to be talking with our good friend Vicki from Madison Community Mont Montessori School. But first, I'm joined by two very special guests, Jenny Sykes and Joe Cornelier from AEI Dish. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Good to have you here. So um, we were talking a little bit before the, the show started about how this is just a really booming market and there's a high demand for, for DISH network services. Can you talk to us a little bit about, um, I mean, you guys are always looking to, to hire. Can you talk to us a little bit about um, some of the experience that is required, if any, for uh, somebody to be an installer? Absolutely. When you contact one of the recruiters at AEI DISH, they're going to start asking you questions about any sort of work history you've had. But what we're looking for is work in fields like construction, outdoor work, any sort of military experience is good. It's not necessary to have done this exact work before. In fact, fact, we have a corporate training facility in Green Bay, Wisconsin, that anyone who works for us as a technician is invited to come to Green Bay for a week. We're going to put you up in a, in a hotel. We're going to, you're going to use a company vehicle to come here, be issued a per diem for food, feed you during the day. And it's a week-long intensive training course with individuals whose entire job is just to train technicians. So on-the-job training is provided. Absolutely. It sounds like they set you up pretty nice there. <laughs> I so think so. Maybe we should talk after the program. <laughs> no, just kidding. So, um, so that, that's cool. Um, now, I, I guess the question that you probably get a lot when people call you up and say, you know, I'm interested in working for DISH is, do I get free DISH services with this? It's the first question I ask, too, and sadly, no. <laughs> <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> But we do offer a variety of benefits for working as sure. a full-time employee of AEI. We offer health insurance, a 401k program, two weeks paid vacation, a number of things that, you know, it averages out free dish, health care. Sure, sure. <laughs> Some of the more important benefits versus Perhaps. free television. So good. <laughs> Very good. So now, Joe, you are, are somebody who has um, walked this walk. Yes. Uh, and... Um, you kind of started out as a technician, and now you are a, a field service manager. Yes, sir. So can you talk to us a little bit about what got you interested in doing this job? Well, I was looking for a change. I was a juvenile detention officer for, for a specific county for a period of years, and I was just looking for something a little bit different. Um, this is a very rewarding job. It's, a, if, it's great because you can see start to finish. You can see the end product from what you began with. It's very rewarding in the fact that when you get to a customer's home, they're, they're awaiting service. They, you know, maybe they don't even have TV, um, anything like maybe an over there antenna. And then once we're done, you know, we start to the finished product and then they're very, very happy to turn on and be able to watch CW. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. CW, thank you for that. You want to come work for us now? <laughs> we'll talk um, after the segment. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, uh, it's, and it sounds, I mean, it sounds like you get to have contact with a lot of people. You get to meet a lot of interesting folks, and, and you're not just stuck behind a desk all day. Yes. So, you're, yes. you're out getting exercise and that kind of thing. That's great. So, um, I guess what I would want to know is, you know, this sounds like a great job. Is there anything that's particularly difficult about working? The most difficult part of the job is just dealing with the extreme weather conditions. Yeah. Uh, winter time, I mean, we're out there. We're out there in the, the heat of the summer and the, the cold of the winter, um, making sure that we can, you know, provide the best customer service that we can. So 
it's, it's tolerable. You get used to it. You know, you dress for the conditions and, uh, and then you, you press on. But it, as far as difficulty goes, that's probably the most difficult. And, and again, it's tolerable. Sure. Sure. And tell us, how do we apply for a job? If somebody wants to apply, how do they do it? That's a great question. There's a team of recruiters who work out of our corporate office who are constantly going through resumes. So www.aeidish.com will bring you to our website where you can apply directly from that website. Once you do, the resume is in our hands and you'll hear back from us either through an email or a phone call. All right. Jenny Sykes and Joe Cornelier, thank you so much for joining us and thanks for the great information today. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Don't go away, there's more Talk of the Town coming up right after this. Stay right here. Hi, welcome back to Talk of the Town. Later on in the show, we'll be meeting with LSM Chiropractic and our good friend Vicki from Madison Community Montessori School will be checking in with us as well. But first, True Laser, laser hair removal, uh, is in the studio today. And I have with me Lori Flam. Lori Flemmy. Flemmy. Sorry, yes, we should have okay. gone over that before. That's all right. Lori <laughs> Flemmy is in our studio. Welcome to our program today. Thank you. It's great, I'm excited great to, to be here. Yeah, great to have you here. And I'm I'm kind of interested in hearing about this topic, um, you know, because I don't I I don't know a whole lot about it. Sure. And as a man, I don't think that there's a whole. I mean, <laughs> maybe you could correct me, but maybe there are some men who would like to do hair removal and that sort of thing. But absolutely, we have a huge male clientele. Sure. Especially yeah. being in the Princeton Club. Well, maybe I'll be one of your new clients. <laughs> uh, what is the most common reason that people would come? to True Laser? Definitely the most uh, common service we provide at True Laser is laser hair removal. Okay. If you're tired of shaving, waxing, tweezing, plucking, um, and all the time and expense that you spend to get rid of unwanted hair, um, you definitely need to come see us at True Laser. Okay, so it's for those who want uh, to get rid of unwanted hair on a more permanent basis. Correct. Okay, excellent. And um, can you tell us a little bit about how long you've been in business? And um, there, some people who've never maybe done it before or even explored the options might wonder about the safety of laser hair removal. Can you talk to us a little sure. bit about that? Sure. Um, at True Laser, we've been helping our clients get rid of unwanted hair for over 15 years on all parts of their body. Mm -hmm. We have three FDA approved lasers, which allow us to treat all different skin types and provide the safest, fastest, most effective treatments on the market today. Awesome, awesome. And can you talk to us a little bit about if there's any, um, is there any guarantee? Do you provide any guarantee for your customers who come in to utilize sure. your services? Um, we stand behind our results at True Laser. We um, provide a package where um, we expect our clients to be extremely satisfied with their results. Um, if after you've completed your package, you require any additional treatments, we do those and we're proud to do that at 80% off for any additional maintenance treatments a client may need any time in the future. Wow. So this isn't like waxing where it kind of, you know, obviously there's shaving. Yes. That's one form of hair removal. Yep, the most and, common. And then that'll, you know, it'll come back within a week. Right. Um, and then there's waxing, which might last, I don't know, what, a couple months, something sure. like that? Sure, yes. And then there's laser hair removal. Um, tell us about how, how long does that last? Sure. So um, when you do laser hair removal, you can definitely expect a permanent reduction. Really? Yes. Um, and when we do that, um, our experience really shows that you will have permanent reduction to your satisfaction. Um, if for any reason you do need additional treatments, like I said, we um, do maintenance at 80% off anytime you ever need it in the future. So it's really great for all of our clients. They love it. Excellent. Excellent. So tell us about where you're located. Sure. So. Um, True Laser has been around for over 15 years. We have three locations in Janesville, Madison, and Rockford. And um, our goal is really to, um, sorry, I'm totally screwing this one up here. <laughs> it's okay, keep um, going, you're doing great. <laughs> so um, we're dedicated to providing um, superior customer satisfaction and safety in all of our treatments. Sure. And our staff is highly trained, and we have um, a medical director who is Dr. Landon Pryor. He's actually a board-certified um, plastic surgeon. Okay, wonderful. Yes. Wonderful. So you've got some experts on staff and some experience to boot as well. Definitely. Awesome. And um, so are there any other services that you provide besides laser hair removal? We do. Um, because we want you to look and feel your best, in addition to laser hair removal, we also um, offer skin rejuvenation, spider vein removal, microderm abrasions, and customized chemical peels as well. Wow, so a lot of different things. We do, absolutely. Things. 
Tell us a little bit about uh, where uh, viewers can go to find more information. Sure. For more information, it's really important for you to know that we do provide free consultations at all three of our locations. Um, we also have a website, which is True Laser LTD, and we are also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So there's a lot of different places we can check you out. Definitely. Well, Lori Flammy, it's been such a pleasure talking with you. It's been great to meet you as well. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks for the information today. Don't go away. When we come back, LSM Chiropractic will be in our studio. It's Talk of the Town on CW57. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. If you have lived in the Dane County region for a while, you've probably seen my next guest's shop, uh, storefront or what have you, set up around different er uh, towns in the area, LSM Chiropractic. I'm now joined by Dr. Jeff Mackey from LSM Chiropractic. Welcome to the program. Well, thanks for having me. And you are one of the, you are the M in LSM <laughs> Chiropractic. I am the M. In, and what is uh, LSM? L, L and S? Lidke Star Mackey Chiropractic Clinic. Uh, the, uh, Practice was founded by Dr. Ken Litke uh, 60 plus years ago. Wow, really? And we're one of the oldest chiropractic groups in the uh, state. And Dr. Harvey Storm joined him about 10 years after that, and I joined in 1980. So we became LSM Chiropractic and decided to stop there because we didn't want to sound like a law firm. Right, so. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Litke, Storm, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to do that. That's not a good thing. So, um, so tell us uh, exactly how does chiropractic fit into today's healthcare model? Well, chiropractic has championed the idea of the human body being able to heal itself and take care of itself really for its whole 100-year history. And over that time, chiropractors have always talked about good nutrition, drinking good water, you know, getting exercise, those types of things that we kind of take for granted nowadays. If you look back in the 40s and 50s, that really wasn't the case. Smoking was considered good for you. It uh, didn't really matter what you ate. Um, you took antibiotics anytime you had an, il uh, an illness and just took them indiscriminately. And as we're seeing now with the, uh, the advent of some of these superbugs, uh, physicians are being much more cautious now when they're prescribing medications. And so chiropractic really fits into a natural, healthy lifestyle very, very well for most people. Absolutely. And you talked a little bit about some of the, the changes that we've seen in um, traditional medicine, traditional Western medicine, mm -hmm. I should say. Can you talk to us a little bit about um, how things have changed between the relationship between chiropractic and um, traditional Western medicine? I certainly can. Uh, the relationship between medicine and chiropractic today couldn't be better. Um, indeed, we actually have a clinic in the Dean St. Mary's uh, Outpatient Center in the Neurological and Institute and Spine Center something that was absolutely unheard of 40, 50 years ago. Uh, when I started in practice in 1980, uh, there was still prohibition against physicians dealing with chiropractors, indeed referring to them. Uh, you literally couldn't be on the same bowling team with a chiropractor. And uh, because of some uh, very famous lawsuits, uh, that has now gone the way of the dodo bird. And chiropractors and physicians work together cooperatively all the time now. And it's, and it's for the best for patients. Yeah, absolutely, because there's always some things that um, uh, the other can do better, so to speak. Certainly. Two heads are better than one. Exactly, and, and we tell our patients if you have an electrical problem in your house, you don't call a plumber, you call an electrician, and it's the same thing with health care. Right. Um, if there's a mechanical issue with spine, chiropractic is a great place to start. Yeah, absolutely. Talk to us a little bit about some of the typical conditions that um, people will come in and ask you to treat. Sure. People associate chiropractors with spine, especially lower back, and that's really where we do shine. Uh, mechanical injuries to the back, disc injuries, um, lifting problems, sprain strains, those types of things are fantastic under chiropractic care. Neck injuries, whiplash, those types of conditions also respond very well. A lot of things that people don't consider for chiropractic are, are things like exercise-induced asthma. Uh, indeed, we tried a, a study with one of the local um, hospital and clinics here a number of years ago because many times when people have difficulty with breathing especially after exertion manipulation can help it stimulates a portion of the nervous system that actually can cause a natural dilation of the uh, of the lung tissue which allows for easier breathing so headaches uh, are another big thing that we see and especially nowadays with people sitting at computers all day long hunched over we see a lot of postural neck issues and headache issues that respond well 
Basically, if it has a joint and it moves, chiropractic can help. Yeah, absolutely. So you're, what you're talking about are some uh, more uh, acute maladies that people would find, uh, physically speaking. Um, what would you tell somebody um, who maybe doesn't experience any of those things? How would you uh, encourage them to uh, see a chiropractor anyway? Well, that's a fantastic question. I'm glad you asked that. Yeah. Chiropractic is not just pain control. Chiropractic is about structure and function. If joints don't function properly, they break down, they wear down. That's where arthritis comes from in knee joints or in spine, improper movement. Joints need motion. Many, many people come to us to stay well, and that's a great part of a healthcare program. Let's try to take care of some of these mechanical issues before they become a problem, before you need a knee replacement, before you need to have a neck fusion. Yeah. So an ounce of prevention is certainly worth a pound of cure. Yeah, prevention. You got it. Well, Dr. Jeff Mackey, we are out of time. Thank you so much for the information today. You are quite welcome. Don't go away. When we come back, we'll be joined by our good friend, uh, Vicki McCarthy from Madison Community Montessori School. It's Talk of the Town on CW57. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. As promised, we're going to check in with our news partner from the Madison Community Montessori School. And joining us is Vicki McCarthy. Welcome back. Hi. Thanks, Jessa. Glad to have you. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. So this is a fascinating topic and good timing for me also <laughs> as we're coming up here. But last time you were here, we talked about raising independent, self-motivated thinkers. Right. So there was a couple things that we looked at, responses to children as a way to foster these skills, our actual responses and right. what they're doing. And we're gonna kind of stick with this theme. So tell me a little bit about the theme of independence. How can we, what do we do to foster independence in children? Right, well the, you know, the last time I was here we did talk about really being very careful about our responses to children and so, you know, just wanna remind the viewers to be being very careful about not using the expression good job in response mm -hmm. to a child's accomplishments. Um, today, though, we're going to focus a little bit more on building independence by encouraging children to help out around the home. And um, the research actually shows that children who participate in household tasks at a very young age, um, there are actually positive impacts on them later in life. There's a fellow by the name of Marty Rossman who's done some research on this. And he found that the best predictor of success for young adults in their 20s is actually whether or not they were participating in, ch in chores, helping out with chores at the age of three or four. Outstanding. Wow, okay, so that actually has a, is a huge indicator in their independence and responsibility. And what's the connection there? Right. Well, in a Montessori classroom, we actually talk a lot about um, building um, practical life skills. So basically the skills that we all use on a regular basis, you know, um, throwing trash away, putting our own things away, doing dishes, making our beds, those sorts of things. And as many of those things that we can actually do in the classroom, we're encouraging children to do those at a very young age. Because, I mean, not only are those skills important, they're obviously going to need those skills later in life, but um, the connection really that the research has made is when children are participating in that way, whether it's in a classroom or in a home environment, so in a home environment, let's say when the children are participating in chores on a regular basis from a young age, they really start to feel a sense of um, being an active, connected, contributing family member. And when you have those feelings as a child, what the research shows is that then later in life when you're faced with decisions and you're trying to make those choices as you kind of travel down your path as a teenager especially, um, when you have that connection and that feeling of being a contributing family member, then you really make choices that are more in alignment with your family values. And that's where the connection comes in. Very interesting. So you mentioned a few kinds of chores. What are some examples, or expand a little bit if you would, for young children that they should be doing in the home? Right. The youngest child, so even a two and three year old, can be really doing some household tasks. And we, we tend to think that they aren't able to do things like that, but they really can, and we see it all of the time in our Montessori environments. Um, so we have a toddler classroom where children are stacking books and putting their toys or their um, work away. They're taking dirty laundry to the hamper. They're folding towels and washcloths. 
Uh, the two and three year old can wipe up spills. They can help set the table. It's, it's really amazing what children are able to do and they're excited to do it. They want to do what the adults are doing. Absolutely, yeah, they, that feeling of independence right. is, is grasped for at an early age. Right. So very interesting. And what about when they move to being four or five, a little bit older? Sure, well as they get older, you're going to continue with the tasks that they were able to do as they were two and three, but you're going to start building on them incrementally as they start to grow and develop. So the four and five year old can certainly help water plants around the house. Um, they can make their bed, they can straighten up their bedroom, they can feed pets. Um, and again, just adding incrementally as they continue to grow. Outstanding. So as we're getting into sort of elementary age students, for parents at home who are wondering then, um, I'm sure that they get more complex. So how involved do they get at that age? Right. Well, not only do the chores get more complex, but the whole sort of situation gets a little bit more challenging because the younger child is actually quite interested and engaged and joyful about helping out with chores. And as the child starts to transition into elementary, some of that joy sometimes goes away. Um, but the early elementary child can certainly be dust mopping floors. They can empty dishwashers and help with meals. The middle elementary child can do a little bit more by starting to wash their own laundry. They can dust furniture, put groceries away, walk the dog. And then the older elementary child can really be doing all of the regular chores around the home. So they can certainly be cleaning bathrooms and vacuuming and um, even mowing the lawn. Outstanding. So things get a little bit more incrementally challenging as they get older and right. probably more challenging to get them to do them as well. That's true. It's <laughs> true. Um, sometimes uh, it isn't easy getting children to do their chores. And you have to figure out, um, first of all, you have to choose your battles. That's a, sort of a parenting 101 um, rule for everybody. But the other piece is that we often find um, in a Montessori environment that if we offer choice, sometimes that helps decrease the, um, the situation if the child is being resistant. So if mm -hmm. you say, you know, would you like to do this or would you like to do that, offering that element of choice is really a, an, an important piece. And then, um, you know, it's not like we're sitting around doing nothing as parents while the children right. are busy doing their chores. So mm -hmm. it's really something that we're all doing together. We're all contributing and helping out in the same way. Absolutely. And we just have to remember that um, it's a really important skill for them. I mean, we're not only teaching them the skills that they're going to need when they leave our family and home environments. Of course, we all hope that our children are changing their sheets and vacuuming and cleaning the house when right. they leave our environments. But we're also really, back to the research piece, we're, we're helping them feel connected to the family and hoping that that connection then allows them to make choices that are in alignment with our family values. Outstanding information and advice, Vicki. Thank you so much for You're sharing. Welcome. Great tips for folks at home with children real young, all the right. way up through elementary and older. And this is Vicki McCarthy, our news partner from Madison Community Montessori School. We'll have you back, as you know. Thanks to all of our guests for joining us, and thank you for watching Talk of the Town. I'm Jessa Jeremiah. Please join us next time.